Hi everyone, it's been quite a while since we've shot video in this location, middle of lockdown, can you remember it? The reason for today is a little different, um, on Christmas afternoon having had a fantastic service with you in church on Christmas morning, we headed down to the coast and um, just near, near uh, Goldry City, uh, the car and the trailer rolled and uh, they pretty much written off. But fortunately, Jean and I aren't. And so thank you to God for sparing us and saving us. Thank you for your prayers, for your visits, the meals, um, the good wishes. We appreciate all of them. Please keep praying for us. Uh, Jean has some soft tissue damage to her shoulder, so she's in some discomfort. I have other discomforts. I have a cracked rib and I have a, a skull fracture and a hole in my head held with some staples. But the doctors are not worried about that at all. The concussion is easing and uh, soon I'll be back to my normal self. Hope to be back with you um, middle of January. Of course, tomorrow, uh, and some of you may be actually watching this tomorrow, uh, tomorrow is an online service, and we hope you'll be blessed by a beginning in the new year in that way. But God bless you all. We'll see you soon, and thank you for your prayers. Keep praying. God bless. Well, good morning and a happy new year to all of you who are watching online today. We're glad that uh, we are able to start a new year off. This is the year of our Lord, 2023. And so as we begin our service, I invite you to join with me in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you this morning on this, the first day of a new year. You are God, you are good, and so we thank you for this new day, for this new year, and the promise that a new beginning of a new year promises and gives to us. As we spend time in your presence, may we experience you in the songs that we will sing, in the prayers that we will share together, in the message that we bring together, and in all of that, may we have hope for a year that is to come. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to invite you to join with us as we sing our first song together.
Then some notices for uh, today. Uh, next Sunday, we still only have one service. That's on the 8th of January, one service at 8.30 here in person at the church. From the 15th of January, however, we move back to two services, 7.30 and 9.15, Sunday school and youth church at 9.15 as well. We hope you'll join us for that. And then on the 22nd of January in the evening at 6 o'clock, we are starting Alpha. And we hope that you will join us. If you have friends who have questions about life, about God, about Jesus, about church, it's the place to bring them. Over 11 weeks on a Sunday evening from 6, we will enjoy listening to some incredible talks, but also sharing with one another these questions that we have, trying to find some answers. We hope that you'll be with us and that you will bring somebody along with you. Life is for exploring. So, where will your curiosity take you? You're invited to Alpha this new year. The best conversations happen over great food with interesting people. A place for the open-minded. And the not quite sure? A space to ask whatever you like or nothing at all. Who knows what this new year will bring? But let's make it one to remember, where we grab all life's got to offer. We'll never have it all figured out. But that's all part of the adventure. Try Alpha. And so as we think about the year that lies ahead and we think about where we've come from, I want to invite you to join with me as we spend some time in prayer for ourselves and for our world. Let us pray. Lord, we gather together on this, the first day of the year, and look back on a year in which we know that you have brought us safely through. Sometimes, Lord, it's been very difficult. Sometimes it's been incredibly hard. Sometimes it's felt impossible, but you have come through again and again and again. So we thank you and praise you. As we begin this new year, we recognize that there are, there are, for all of us, some things that we need to leave in the past, leave in 2022. Some of them are bad habits, bad actions, bad behaviors. Some of them are because we're looking after our own interests and find ourselves to be way more selfish than we should be. Some of them are simply sins that we don't even admit to ourselves, let alone uh, people around us. And so we confess to you these things, these things that we know we need to leave behind, these things we know we need to allow you to break their hold on us. And thank you, Lord, that the coming of Jesus into our world makes that possible, makes the breaking of the chains that bind us possible gives us the strength and ability to live a different kind of life and so as we ask your forgiveness will you also give us the strength the courage the hope and fill us with your spirit so that we can be different in this year that lies ahead thank you that that first christmas leading into that first easter three and a half years later is the reason that we have hope Remind us of that in the year that lies ahead. And may we know that because of you, we have hope. Our hope is real because it's based in you who are real too. May we know the reality of the hope that we have in Christ. Not just today, but every day. And so, would your hope may your hope give us strength as we face the difficulties we will have during this year. And we think of those who aren't even able to tune in today or join us because of their struggles, their, their, their dashed hopes, their loss, their pain, their fear. And for us and for those who struggle, Lord, may your light come into the world that first Christmas. May your light shine again and still for them and for us. We trust you for you are good. And you are God. 
And so we ask these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. So something that's always freaked me out a little is that on Christmas Eve, you still get all the Christmas specials at the shops. You go back to the shops two days later, and it's all back to school stuff. It's like Christmas never happened. It's like by the 26th of December, we've forgotten about the wonder and awe at the nativity and the birth of the Savior of the world. And I guess it's probably a bit like that for much of our lives. We, we have these incredible moments that happen in our lives. Um, and despite looking forward to them for months and months, once they're over, they kind of slip very quickly into the recesses of our memories. And it may surprise you that the Jesus story follows this process almost exactly. There's this anticipation, Advent 1. Anticipation, Advent 2. Anticipation grows, Advent 3. And then anticipation 4, the imminent arrival of the imminent one is upon us, and suddenly it's Christmas. And Jesus is here, and the angels sing, and the shepherds visit, and the mad baby arrive. Wow! 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 Or, oh! Cute, the little baby born in a manger. And in the church calendar, we, get, we, we go from awe and wonder to shock and fear. One week, we're reading the nativity stories, and this week, well, not so much. For this reading, we do, however, go back to Bethlehem, but it's nothing like we expect. Matthew 2 from verse 13. When the wise men had left, Joseph had a dream. In the dream, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. Get up, the angel said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you to come back. Herod is going to search for the child. He wants to kill him. So Joseph got up. During the night, he left for Egypt with the child and his mother Mary. And they stayed there until King Herod died. So the words the Lord had spoken through the prophet came true. I have brought my son out of Egypt. Herod realized the wise men had tricked him, and so he became very angry. He gave orders about Bethlehem and the area around it. He ordered all the boys, two years and under, to be killed. This agreed with the time when the wise men had first seen the star. In this way, the words of Jeremiah the prophet came true. He had said, a voice is heard in Ramah. It's the sound of crying and deep sadness. Rachel is crying over her children. She refused to be comforted because they are gone. I remember as a teenager listening to a radio play based on the slaughter of the innocents, the harrowing story of this event. And it's told from the perspective of a young mother living in Bethlehem whose son is killed by Herod's soldiers. And she keeps asking anyone who would listen to her why those two who had, who had kind of shacked up, kind of, you know, been pushed into son table, why they had suddenly left at midnight. Why were they spared and her son was not? A harrowing question. Why? Was their son spared and hers not? A harrowing, harrowing question. But the point I make is this. The wonder and awe at the birth of Jesus, the angels, the shepherd, and the wise men are suddenly over. And this little family have to keep running ahead of the bands of soldiers who are killing off every Jewish boy two years and under around Bethlehem. And Mary and Joseph run as far as Egypt to get safety for Jesus. Gifts now mean very little. Shepherds and angels are, are almost forgotten. It's safety first. Jesus' safety first. Survive. We have to make it for the sake of the baby. Now, as we start a new year, the year of our Lord 2023, we can very, e very easily get distracted by our needs to survive. Maybe you've survived Christmas, but will you survive your family the rest of the year? Maybe you've survived some of the holidays, but are heading back to work. Will you survive work? Will you survive the school holidays with the children hanging around all the time, wanting, demanding? Will you survive the back-to-school angst? 
our granddaughter goes to grade R, and, and we're kind of interested and worried to see how she'll cope with the new school. Will you survive the new school or back to school angst? Will you survive your illness or your struggles or your relationships? I wonder as they ran, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, I wonder how many times Joseph kept saying to Mary, God's angel told me to run. Of course, by now Mary had understood angels in the first place. Of course, it was an angel who had come to her to tell her that she was pregnant in the first place. and She was going to have a son. It was angels who, who instead of the family and, and friends gathered around singing praises and announcing the child's birth, it were angels in the sky announcing the child's birth. So she understood angels. And by now Joseph had realized that God was really at work, and so they ran. Ran knowing that God was at work, that they would survive, that the baby would survive, despite the incredible odds. So it's not surprising that our lives go from awe and wonder to shock and fear in an instant. Now, of course, if you know a little bit about the Bible, Hebrews running to Egypt is a recurring theme in the Bible, and it seldom ends well. Abraham and Sarai run to Egypt and get into all sorts of trouble there. Joseph is sold as a slave into Egypt. And now it's Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus running to Egypt. The friends Joseph knew God, just like Abraham knew God. And this Joseph knew God too. Mary and Joseph knew God. They knew God had a plan. They knew that Jesus would be safe if they trusted him, that they would be safe if they trusted him. Because God had this fantastic plan to save humankind, to save you and to save me. And so as, as you and I go into 2023, seldom spoken of like this, but... But we used to kind of mark the calendar by the year of our Lord, 2023. And I want to keep saying that. This is the year of our Lord, 2023. God has a plan for you, just as he has for me. And even though last week it was sold as born, oh, cute baby Jesus, as we watched in wonder and awe as the Christ child is born into the world, Emmanuel, God with us, God not far away, God not ignoring us, God here with us. And today, suddenly, it's shock and craziness in our world. And we don't want to forget the awe and wonder. But suddenly, kind of there's this nagging thing about safety first. We've got to make this week. We've got to make this month, this month where there are like 19 Mondays. You know what I mean. We've got to make this year. But I want to remind you that that despite the sudden shift from awe and wonder to shock and fear for Mary and Joseph and Jesus, despite that, they trusted God. And despite suddenly our focus moving away from the baby, the Christ child, our, 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 our focus shifts to a God who is faithful, a God who is a plan, a God who is heading towards Easter. And we remember that God is a plan. That the names given to Jesus, one of them was Emmanuel. God is with us. That God is with you. He is. God has a plan. God cares. God is with you. And God will come through. So may you know this. Not just today on the 1st of January, the year of our Lord, 2023. But every single day of this year and of every year. Know that God is good. That he has a plan. That Jesus is with us. Emmanuel, God with us. And that we will get through, not just today, not just January, but this year. Because God promised to be with us and he is faithful. May God bless you in this year ahead. Would you join me for our closing prayer? Lord, you came into a world which was certainly upside down, inside out. A world filled with pain and suffering, 
poverty and brokenness and equality. A world very similar to our world and maybe even our lives today. Thank you for the reminder of Mary and Joseph and Jesus and their early journey trusting you through the incredible odds that faced them, knowing that you had a plan and you are good and you are God. May we, as we look back over our shoulder at the nativity and Christmas, be reminded through the hope that Mary and Joseph had in you, that we can have hope in the face of adversity and difficulties too. May we trust you for the year that lies ahead. May we trust you because you are good and you are God. May we trust you because you promise Emmanuel, God with us, never to abandon and leave us. So may that be our experience, not just today on the 1st of January, but tomorrow on the 2nd and then on the 3rd and every single day of the year and years that lie ahead. And we ask these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a moment Every heart needs a rescue There is a season Every soul needs a breakthrough Help from heaven We all need Help from heaven There is a whisper voice of hope inside you there is an answer there is an answer a name above to guide you help from heaven we all need help from heaven help from heaven
Now would you receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore.